grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. I would like to welcome you to Sherburn United Church of Christ's May 3rd uh, worship service. If uh, you are a visitor, you are certainly welcome uh, as we gather here across the miles. Today we will be worshiping together around the table for a meal if you would like to uh, grab something to eat if you don't have your breakfast before you, if you've already finished your breakfast, a cup of coffee or even just a glass of water would be just, just fine. We will also be lighting a candle for part of our service, so if you would like to have a candle ready that you can light, that would be great also. Part of our music today, I would like to thank Beth Lewis, a friend of mine who uh, is playing and singing a portion of that. We continue with our Easter season because Easter isn't just one day. We have an abundance of days, it seems like almost endless, but they're there for us to celebrate new life. The early church shared in abundance, and they, had, they did it in this way. Day by day, as they spent much time together in the temple, they broke bread at home, and they ate food with glad and generous hearts, praising God and having the goodwill of all the people. It's from Acts 2, 46 and 47. We create that temple of worship in our hearts as we connect this day across the boundaries of space and time and location. But we also share this worship as we connect together. For at the heart of the matter, we are connected with the spirit that makes us one in love. Will you join me as we bring our hearts together and take a deep breath to begin Let us now together light our candles and allow our worries to melt with the wax. At this time, I would like to welcome you to go back with me to my home in Waterville. I would like to welcome you to our home in Waterville that we share with our son and daughter-in-law and grandchildren. Uh, today we'll be talking about the shepherding love that is ours through the great shepherd, Jesus Christ. Uh, as we hear our scriptures and everything else, we will be reminded of how Christ's presence in our lives will certainly comfort and guide us. But before we begin the rest of our worship service, I would like us to take some time and offer our blessing for the meal that we have. So would you please join me um, as we, we do this repeating prayer. Shepherding God, we gather in your name, invited by Jesus, bound together with your spirit, 
in union with each other. Feed our bodies and our spirits with your comforting presence so that we might be your comfort to others. Bless this food and break open our hearts. Bless this drink and pour out our love as we do this in remembrance of Christ Jesus. Amen. So let us break bread now while we break open the word in our scriptures. Jesus uses the metaphor of a shepherd many times in his ministry. We're even familiar with God being referred to as the shepherd in the 23rd Psalm. Well, today from the Gospel of John, we will be hearing about the shepherd who the sheep trust, who the sheep are willing to to follow, even at the pure guidance of his voice. And so as we hear this scripture, we find that these sheep truly are seeking to fulfill their need of, of, a, of a good pasture, the abundance of uh, greenery to eat. And so let us now listen to the voice of our reader with the Gospel of John. Jesus used the metaphor of a shepherd several times in his ministry. We will hear a song using the most famous instance from Psalm 23 later in our worship. In this passage from the Gospel of John, the sheep know the shepherd really cares about them and offers what they need, good, abundant, green pastures to eat in. They recognize the shepherd who takes care of them as they hear his voice. In the book of John, the 10th chapter, verses 1 through 10, we hear these words of Jesus. I assure you that whoever doesn't enter into the sheep pen through the gate, but climbs over the wall, is a thief and an outlaw. The one who enters through the gate is the shepherd of the sheep. The guard of the gate opens the gate for him, and the sheep listen to his voice. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. Whenever he has gathered all of his sheep, he goes before them and they follow him because they know his voice. They won't follow a stranger, but will run away because they don't know the stranger's voice. Those who heard Jesus use this analogy didn't understand what he was saying. So Jesus spoke again, I assure you that I am the gate of the sheep. All who came before me were thieves and outlaws, but the sheep didn't listen to them. I am the gate. Whoever enters through me will be saved. They will come in and go out and find pasture. The thief enters only to steal, kill, and destroy. I came so that they would have life. Indeed, so that they could live life to the fullest. In this particular scripture, we hear that Jesus, the good shepherd, and he claims himself to be that shepherd, is the safe haven for the sheep, for we are in our flock protected by the walls of our pen. And the gate is Jesus himself. In this first passage, though, there's mention of thieves. Obviously, someone's not going to come and steal me away personally. But what are the thieves in my life? that prevent me from feeling the abundance of the safe haven of Jesus Christ. There are things out there that rob each one of us of that wondrous blessing of feeling that nurture and safety of the Good Shepherd. 
some of them could simply be, especially right now, trying to stay safe, trying to keep ourselves safe. But they could be other things. They could be, you know, education. They could be, and what I mean by education is maybe we just see so much education that we forget of our need to be part of the, the gospel of Christ. Maybe it's entertainment. Maybe we like to keep ourselves so entertained with other things that it prevents us from being a part of that wondrous flock. It could be a number of things that interfere with us feeling the safety of the shepherd, the one who we are willing to follow purely by the voice. The shepherd. Jesus the Christ, who we recognize, especially during this Easter season, is the one who came to give us a new hope, a new way, a new challenge, a new life. Christ's death and resurrection brings to us that true sense that no matter what happens, Christ is able to bring new life. Think about it. Think about what that really means, that Jesus Christ rose from the dead, is continuing to teach the disciples, and even continues to teach and work with us today. Wondrous offering that Christ has made to us, that offering of true grace. The one that no matter how hard I work, no matter how hard I preach, no matter how many people I help, is insufficient without Jesus Christ. What a wondrous blessing Christ is in our lives to bring salvation to this world in a way that brings hope. We're called to follow Christ just by the sound of his voice, just by the sound of the promise of that salvation, of that grace, of that resurrection. Makes us wonder exactly what it is that fills us with such joy. The resurrection of Jesus Christ doesn't just bind us together as believers, but it truly calls us to go out and serve, to do our part. Yes, we can gather together in the comfort, even if it isn't in a physical sense together. Maybe it's just in that spiritual sense of us being together, even at this moment, while we come together to worship. Maybe just coming together with Christ can stimulate, lead, and challenge us to be Christ's present in this world. Listen to the call of the shepherd and go out. Go out that gate to follow the guidance of the one who has called us all. Hear the voice of Christ and be renewed to the generosity of Christ's grace, to the abundance of the Spirit. Amen. Clayton has been writing a letter to his grandmother and grandfather uh, who are, like everyone else, kind of stuck in their homes. He wanted to make sure that he knew, they knew that he cared for them and uh, wanted to wish them well and can't wait until they can be together again. This might be a great idea that all you parents could do with, <coughs> with your young children at home is have them 
I don't know, draw a picture, write a note, um, make a card, and send it to someone they love, uh, letting them know that not only do they love them, but God's love is there with them too. Thank you, Clayton, for doing such a nice job. It is difficult in this moment not to be near some of the people we love and might be worried about. So take a moment and say out loud the names of people that we wish were right there with you right now. As we name them, they are present with us in our hearts. So let us name those people now. We also want to call to mind the people we cannot name, whose names we do not know, but we know they need our prayers and God's comfort. Let us remember those by praying for those who have lost loved ones, for those who are sick and recovering, for those who are caring for loved ones who are sick at home, for those who are caring for persons in medical care, for those who are separated from loved ones, for those who are feeling alone and isolated, for those who are helping and are so very tired, for those who are struggling to find friends, food, and comfort, for those who are afraid. Let us take another breath of spirit as our amen. We know that God sends out our prayers and the spirit, the breath of God, is blowing within us outward as a spirit of compassion and presence. Will you breathe with me? Amen. I ask you now to join us as we participate together in the Lord's Supper. We remember that on the night that Jesus was betrayed. He was eating with his disciples, and while they were eating, he took the bread, and after giving a blessing, he broke it, and he shared it with his disciples. And he said, take, eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In a similar manner, he took the cup of, and after giving uh, thanks for this, for this cup, he shared it with his disciples. And he said, take, drink. This is the cup of the new covenant that is shed for you. Will you join us as we remember Jesus in the taking of the bread and the sharing of the cup? body of Christ broken for you. Do this in the remembrance of Christ. Cup of salvation. Drink. As a prayer of thanksgiving, Will you say with me, or repeat after me, gratitude. Gratitude. And now I ask that you affirm with me how Christ's presence in our lives has lightened us and made us God's people. Will you repeat after me? We know Jesus is present among us. We know Jesus is present among us. Even in this very home. Even in this very home. We will not let fear be louder than love. We will not let fear be louder than love. But with glad hearts and rejoicing souls. But with glad hearts and rejoicing souls. We will sing God's praise. We will sing God's praise. 
For we are Easter people. For we are Easter people. times of brokenness in every wilderness God has seen us through times when our strength was gone somehow we carried on God has seen us through look behind and see throughout history God has never let us down. Lean ahead and trust. God is guiding us. God is with us here right now. God will see me through. God will see you through. God will see us through somehow. Step by step, we'll be given all we need. God will see us through this now. In times of brokenness, in every wilderness, God has seen us through Times when our strength was gone Somehow we carried on God has seen us through Look behind and see Throughout history God has never let us down Lean ahead and trust, God is guiding us, God is with us here right now. God will see me through, God will see you through, God will see us through somehow. Step by step, we'll be given all. see me through God will see you through God will see us through somehow step by step we'll be given all we need God will see us through this now God will see us through this now As we close this time together, remember God is always with you, no matter, no matter what you face, no matter what trials or hardships come your way, God is right beside you, always filling your cup to overflowing, guiding and directing your path. So acknowledge your fear and your worry and know that it is true and holy as any feeling, including joy, hope, and love. Take heart. This is the heart of the matter. Amen.